This is Space Time, Series 25, Episode 78. Coming up on Space Time, discovery of the fastest known star. Physicists confront the neutron lifetime puzzle and shedding new light on dark matter. All that and more coming up on Space Time. Welcome to Space Time with Stuart Gary. Astronomers have discovered the fastest known star in the galaxy. The star, known as S4716, orbits Sagittarius A star, a supermassive black hole at the centre of our galaxy, taking just four Earth years to complete each orbit, in the process reaching speeds of around 8,000 kilometres per second. The discovery reported in the Astrophysical Journal also shows that S4716's orbit brings it to within 100 astronomical units of the black hole. An astronomical unit is the average distance between the Earth and the Sun, which is around 150 million kilometres. And considering Sagittarius A star has some 4.3 million times the mass of the Sun, that orbit's extremely tight by astronomical standards. In this area surrounding the black hole at the centre of the galaxy is a densely packed cluster of stars. Known as the S cluster, it's home to well over 100 stars that differ in their brightness and mass. All S stars are especially fast. The study's lead author, Florian Perska from the University of Cologne, says that one prominent member, S2, behaves sort of like a big person sitting in front of you in the movie theatre, blocking out your view of what's important. The view into the centre of our galaxy is therefore often obscured by S2. However, in brief moments, astronomers get to observe the surroundings of the central black hole. By continually refining methods of analysis, together with observations covering almost 20 years, astronomers have now identified a star that travels around the central supermassive black hole in just four Earth years. The authors needed five telescopes to observe the star, with four of these being combined into a single large telescope, allowing more accurate and detailed observations. Pesca says for a star to be in a stable orbit so close and fast in the vicinity of a supermassive black hole was completely unexpected and marks the limit of what can be observed with traditional telescopes. Importantly, the discovery also sheds new light on the origin and orbit of fast-moving stars in the very heart of the Milky Way. The study's co-author, Michael Zaschek from Mazaki University in the Czech Republic, says the short-period compact orbit of S4716 is quite puzzling. He says stars simply couldn't form very easily that close to a black hole, so S4716 needed to migrate inwards to reach its current orbital position. He thinks it did this by approaching other stars and objects in the S cluster, which then caused its orbit to be perturbed and shrunk significantly until eventually it ended up where it is now. This is space time. Still to come, physicists confront the neutron lifetime puzzle and shedding new light on dark matter. All that and more still to come on space time. To solve a long-standing puzzle about how long a neutron can live outside an atomic nucleus, physicists entertained a wild but testable theory proposing the existence of a right-handed version of our left-handed universe. They designed a mind-bending experiment at the United States Department of Energy's Oak Ridge National Laboratory to try and detect a particle that had been speculated about but never actually seen. It found the theorized mirror neutron, a dark matter twin to the neutron, could explain a discrepancy between answers from two different types of neutron lifetime experiments, and it would also provide the first observation of dark matter. Now, as we've discussed at some length this week on Space Time, dark matter is a mysterious invisible substance which makes up some 80% of all the matter in the universe. Scientists have no idea what it is, 
but they know it exists because they can see its gravitational influence on normal matter, preventing galaxies from flying apart as they rotate. The study's lead author, Leah Browsard, says dark matter remains one of the most important and puzzling questions in science, clear evidence that researchers don't fully understand nature. Neutrons are commonly found with protons in the nucleus of atoms. However, like protons, they can also exist outside the nucleus. Last year, using the Los Alamos Neutron Science Center, the study's co-author Frank Gonzalez, who's now at Oak Ridge, made the most precise measurements ever on just how long free-floating neutrons can live before they decay, turning into protons, electrons and antineutrinos. It turns out the answer is 877.8 seconds, give or take 0.3 seconds. That's a little under 15 minutes. And it hinted at a crack in the standard model of particle physics, the foundation stone of science's understanding of the universe. It describes the behavior of subatomic particles, such as the three quarks which make up the neutron. The flipping of quarks initiates neutron decay into protons. The neutron lifetime is an important parameter in the standard model because it's used as an input for calculating the quark mixing matrix, which describes quark decay rates. If the quarks don't mix as expected, it would suggest hints of new physics beyond the standard model. To measure the lifespan of a free neutron, scientists take two approaches which theoretically should arrive at the same answer. One simply traps neutrons in a magnetic bottle and counts their disappearance. The other counts protons appearing in a beam as neutrons decay. The problem is, it turns out, neutrons appear to live 9 seconds longer in a beam than what they do in a bottle. And that simply shouldn't happen, so why the discrepancy? One hypothesis is that the neutron's transforming from one state to another and then back again. Oscillations are quantum mechanical phenomena. If a neutron can exist as either a regular or mirror neutron, then you get oscillation, a rocking back and forth between the two states. So the Oak Ridge team performed the first ever search of neutrons oscillating into dark matter mirror neutrons using a novel disappearance and regeneration technique. The neutrons were made at the Spallation Neutron Source, a Department of Energy Office of Science user facility. A beam of neutrons were guided to a magnetism reflectometer. The instrument applied a strong magnetic field to enhance oscillations between neutron states. Then the beam impinged on a wall made of boron carbide, which is a strong neutron absorber. Now, if the neutron does in fact oscillate between regular and mirror states, when the neutron state hits the wall, it will interact with atomic nuclei and get absorbed into the wall. However, if it's in its theorized mirror neutron state, it's dark matter that won't interact. So, these dark matter or mirror neutrons would easily make it through the wall to the other side. It would be as if the neutrons had gone through a portal to some dark sector, a figurative concept used in the physics community. The dynamics are the same on the other side of the wall, where the authors try to induce what are presumably mirror neutrons, the dark matter twin state, to turn back into regular neutrons. The discovery of any regenerated neutrons could therefore be a sign of the particle nature of dark matter and an incredible discovery. Sadly, the findings reported in the journal Physical Review Letters showed no evidence of neutron regeneration. And all 100% of the neutrons were stopped, with 0% passing through the wall. Of course, in physics, that's not a failure. It simply eliminates one hypothesis, so we don't have to do that one again, and therefore helps advance knowledge. And with one particular mirror matter theory debunked, scientists can now turn their attention to others as they continue to try and solve the neutron lifetime puzzle. And Prasad says her team will continue looking for a reason to explain the discrepancy. If you're the average person and you think about a portal, you're thinking about what you might encounter in a story or in a movie where you're about to go to some strange new world because you're going to be traveling through space and time. But for a particle physicist, when we use the word portal, it's figurative. We're looking for new ways that the matter we know and understand that makes up our universe might interact with the dark matter that makes up the majority of our universe, which we don't understand. 
When the stories about my research first came out, it actually coincided with the release of a very popular TV show called Stranger Things. I think for a lot of people, they, they could draw these very strong parallels between what was happening in the show, um, where we're opening portals to other dimensions, and, and my research. Um, and so actually, I was contacted a lot by people who wanted to volunteer to go into the other dimension and, and explore. But that's, that's not what my research is about. We're looking for the possibility that a neutron can go through a wall. And we just have basically a tube with a, a blocked end. And so this neutron goes through this tube in the middle of this magnet, and we expect that all neutrons should just be stopped. And so if you see anything on the other side, the neutrons must have had some way, some portal that allowed them to pass through. So the question I get the most is, were we successful in opening the portal? And unfortunately, no, we did not find any evidence of parallel universes or, or new interactions with, with the neutron and the dark sector. But of course, it's still possible that the neutrons are turning into dark matter in a way our experiment wasn't sensitive to, so we are still planning more sensitive searches um, and more in future experiments at the high flux isotope reactor. That's Leah Brassard from the United States Department of Energy's Oak Ridge National Laboratory. And this is Space Time. Still to come, shedding new light on dark matter, and later in the science report, a new study looks at who's more likely to develop long COVID. All that and more still to come on Space Time. A team of scientists have developed a new method for predicting the composition of dark matter. The new research, reported in the journal Physical Review Letters, looks at predicting cosmological signatures for models of dark matter with specific masses between that of an electron and that of a proton. Previous methods had predicted similar signatures for simpler models of dark matter. But this research establishes new ways to find these signatures in more complex models, which experiments continue to search for. The study's lead author, Cara Giovanetti from New York University, says experiments searching for dark matter aren't the only way to learn more about this mysterious substance. Precision experiments of different parameters of the universe, for example, the amount of helium in the universe or the temperature of different particles in the early universe, can also teach us a lot about dark matter. Giovanetti and colleagues have focused on Big Bang nucleosynthesis, the processes by which light forms of matter, such as helium, hydrogen and lithium, are created. Giovanetti says the presence of invisible dark matter affects how each of these elements will form. Also vital to these phenomena is the cosmic microwave background, the electromagnetic radiation generated by combining electrons and protons that remained after the universe's formation. According to Big Bang Theory, temperatures and pressures during the first 270,000 years of the universe's existence were so hot atoms couldn't form. Matter was instead distributed as a highly ionized quark-gluon plasma, which was very efficient at scattering radiation. This meant that photons from the early universe were effectively trapped in an impenetrable fog, which to this day still hides these early times from astronomers. But as the universe expanded and cooled, temperatures and densities dropped to a point where atomic nuclei and electrons could eventually combine to form the first atoms. This is known as the epoch of recombination. And it's at this time that photons were finally able to escape the fog of the early universe and travel freely. The cosmic microwave background radiation is a record of these photons at the moment of their escape. The authors sought a means to spot the presence of a specific category of dark matter, that with a mass between that of an electron and that of a proton, by creating models that took into account both Big Bang nuclear synthesis and the cosmic microwave background radiation. Giovanetti says this type of dark matter should modify the abundance of certain elements produced in the early universe and leave an imprint in the cosmic microwave background by modifying how quickly the universe expands. In their research, the authors have made predictions about cosmological signatures linked to the presence of certain forms of dark matter. They say that these signatures will be the result of dark matter changing the temperatures of different particles or altering how fast the universe expands. 
Their results show that dark matter that's too light will lead to different amounts of light elements than what astrophysical observations can see. Giovanetti says lighter forms of dark matter might make the universe expand so fast that these elements don't have a chance to form. She says her team will learn from their analysis that some models of dark matter can't have a mass that's too small, otherwise the universe would have looked very different from the one we see today. I guess only time will tell. This is Space Time. That's the show for now. Space Time is available every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday through Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Spotify, Acast, Amazon Music, Bytes.com, SoundCloud, YouTube, your favorite podcast download provider, and from Spacetime with StuartGary.com. Space Time's also broadcast through the National Science Foundation on Science Zone Radio and on both iHeartRadio and TuneIn Radio. And you can help to support our show by visiting the Space Time store for a range of promotional merchandising goodies. Or by becoming a Space Time patron, which gives you access to triple episode commercial free versions of the show, as well as lots of bonus audio content which doesn't go to air, access to our exclusive Facebook group and other rewards. Just go to spacetimewithstuartgary.com for full details. And if you want more space time, please check out our blog where you'll find all the stuff we couldn't fit in the show, as well as heaps of images, news stories, loads of videos, and things on the web I find interesting or amusing. Just go to spacetimewithstuartgary.tumblr.com. That's all one word, and that's Tumblr without the E. You can also follow us through at Stuart Gary on Twitter, at Spacetime with Stuart Gary on Instagram through our Spacetime YouTube channel. And on Facebook, just go to facebook.com forward slash Spacetime with Stuart Gary. And Spacetime is brought to you in collaboration with Australian Sky and Telescope magazine, your window on the universe. You've been listening to Spacetime with Stuart Gary. This has been another quality podcast production from Bytes.com. 